At first, we'll take a look at the upper portion, and this is your trachea, it's cartilaginous. And it has uh, mucociliary clearance, which means that it's made up of columnar. Let me give you another example. Say that you're smoking. Hmm? And uh, if you're smoking, then what has to happen? Well, the trachea and company have to protect themselves, don't they? And how do you protect yourself against smoke? Not with columnar cells. Hmm? It's squamous cells. So if the columnar cell has to turn into a squamous cell, what do you call this? Good, metaplasia. Do you see the point here? As we move forward and we go deeper beyond the bronchi into the bronchioles, then we get into goblet cells and we'll produce quite a bit of mucus. And what does mucus mean to you? For example, I say that you have three months of productive cough for two consecutive years. That's the definition of what? Chronic bronchitis. So at this point, as we move forward, the terminology becomes very important. It is important that you remain alert at all times so that you understand my language and my terminology so that you know as to what I'm referring to. Kind of like what I've been doing the entire course. Okay, now, what's beautiful about this is the fact that, well, take a look where we are at first. Proximal portion of the pulmonary tree. There's my trachea and there's your bronchi. Now we're going to put in some pathologies. We said that as far as the upper structure is concerned, that it's made up of cartilage. Has to be, because you want that to be supported. You want that to strictly conduct air without any interference down into the alveoli. So why would you ever want premature collapse? You don't. You need those cartilaginous rings. Now what you're seeing here in blue will be the infections, and what you're seeing here in red will be the diseases. Let's take a look at parainfluenza virus. You've heard of laryngotracheal bronchitis. Now close your eyes and think of this anatomically in terms of sequence. What's the first structure? Larynx. What's the next structure? Distal. Trachea. What's after that? Ah, bronchi. There you have it. So instead of memorizing this, well, you should already know from anatomy the sequence. And so what am I referring to? What is this? It's para-influenza. This is going to be your crew, isn't it? So your crew has your type of uh, cough to it. But here, because of how proximal it is, now if you know what a steeple is on top of a, a, a building such as a church, then it's going to be that area of the building or the roof where it comes together like a steeple. Well, in parainfluenza or your crew, one of the most common causes of crew is parainfluenza. So if you want, C-R-O-U-P-P-P. -P -P. Oftentimes a P is silent. But anyhow, point is, it's a steeple sound that you might find on x-ray. Where? Look where you are, up in the proximal portion. And we have another infection, number five, and we'll take a look at this. Locate it, blue, circle five, and that's your bronchopneumonia. Allow the name to speak to you. Bronco, meaning to say that you have involvement of the bronchi. So we will see this later on as well as we get into distal segments, but giving you an understanding that this is involving the bronchi. A common or organism here would be Klebsiella pneumonia. When you think about Klebsiella pneumonia, you should be thinking about perhaps this. I mean, if it, if, have fun with it a little bit. Uh, elderly patient and maybe perhaps a nursing home, and they're hiding a bottle of alcohol. And uh, ever so often, they take the decanter and they take a swig. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And so, therefore, the most common pneumonia that you might find in elderly slash perhaps alcoholics, kind of put them together there, if that helps you, will be the organism Klebsiella pneumonia. In microbiology, you've gone through different pneumonias and what they look like. For example, Staph aureus would be, well, what's oreo? What's AU mean to you on the periodic table? Gold, isn't it? So, therefore, the type of phlegm, or productive cough that you have would be yellow, goldish, clear. Say that it's something like um, pseudomonas. Well, that begins with a little P. There's a little microbiologic agent called pyocyanin. What color is your sputum there? Ah, green. Oftentimes, pseudomonas as well, rarely, but still could result in your nails becoming green. Pyocyanin is an interesting, interesting uh, uh, component of pseudomonas. Those would be infections, diseases. Well, here's squamous cell carcinoma or small cell. Now, the reason that I've put both of these together is because when we get into x we talk about lung cancers. Well, these cancers will be located centrally. And by that, I mean it'll be located by the mediastinum, as I'd understood. Now, squamous, normally speaking, if you remember the trachea and the bronchi, and then, as I said earlier, you will undergo the process of what physiologic adaptation Good. It's called metaplasia. Let me ask you something. 
What if you're smoking and your patient unfortunately develops progressive dysphagia? What's dysphagia mean? Difficulty with swallowing. That would be an esophagus. Be careful. Now, smoking obviously could result in cancers up and down the body, but I've given you two here. One would be in the trachea, and this would be something like maybe squamous cell, and that's a metaplastic transformation. But what if you're in the esophagus? Is that a metaplastic transformation before you went into cancer, before you went into dysplasia and then cancer? No, it wasn't. Is that clear? Really? Uh-huh. Because esophagus made up of what kind of histology? Normally, think non-keratinized type of, well, you tell me. Good. Squamous. So you began as squamous, you were smoking, and ended up as squamous cancer. So the process never went through a metaplastic change before going to dysplasia and cancer. Is that clear? But Dr. Raj, I thought that you have Barrett's esophagus. Yes, Barrett's esophagus is due to why? Oh, reflux of acid. Okay, so what we wish to do here as we go through this is make sure that you're clear about definitions, common things that you'll encounter on your board exams, and things that you want to look out for over and over and over again. We're strictly in the trachea. Now, small cell, extremely aggressive. Another name for small cell you should know is oat cell. What you notice isn't here is adenocarcinoma, which is the most common lung cancer. All these three will group, will, will group together later, and it's called bronchogenic. Then you take a look at number three. Number three is chronic bronchitis. Hmm, where are you? Bronchi. Proximal portion. What's happening? You, all, you might have heard of something like a Reed index. If you haven't, well, make, it'll make perfect sense to you. Chronic bronchitis, inflammation, the bronchi that's taking place. You're producing quite a bit of mucus, usually due to smoking. Huh? Smoking. And the way that we'll approach our obstructive, obstructive diseases in the lung will be rather novel for you. And it'll be much simpler. And it's current day practice that you have to, have to be familiar with. Because chronic bronchitis, emphysema, and asthma, and I'll show you this as we go through this, has overla overlapping type of signs and symptoms, as you shall see. You'll have fun with this, and the definition, definition, definition of chronic bronchitis is three months of consecutive productive cough for over two consecutive years. So you must have a span of three months in which your patient is coughing for three, three, three consecutive months. Keep that in mind, because you will be given something like that at some point in time in terms of history, on your clinical rotations, on exams, and so forth. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.